Hey there, welcome back to Health Hacks MD. Today we're tackling a topic that is super common, drug allergies, and comparing that with intolerances. Let's start with the basics. Did you know that not all reactions are created equal? That's right. While allergies involve your immune system going into red alert mode, intolerances are more like your body saying, hey, I'm not a fan of this stuff, let's call it quits. Now here's an example, meet Dave. Dave has a penicillin allergy. When he takes penicillin, within 15 minutes, he starts developing hives and itch all over his body. His face starts swelling up and he has difficulty breathing. He has an allergy. Now meet Tracy. Tracy has an intolerance to ibuprofen. When she takes ibuprofen, she feels really nauseous, her belly hurts, and she starts having diarrhea. That's an intolerance to ibuprofen, not an allergy. Allergy is different from intolerance in that in allergy, you're sensitized to the drug or food that you ingest. Your body creates a memory towards this food and treats it as an enemy. So the next time you're re-exposed to this food or drug, your body goes into red alert mode and releases all kinds of chemicals to cause that allergic reaction. Intolerance is more like you can't stand the side effects of the medication. And that's an important distinction because if you cannot tolerate one ibuprofen or one drug in the same class, we can try a different NSAID. Whereas if you're allergic, because the structure looks similar, you have to avoid a whole chunk of different medications that you could otherwise use when you need it. Getting into penicillin allergy. Here's a fun fact. Penicillin allergy isn't always a life sentence. 80% of the people who do have penicillin allergy as a child actually outgrow it as they grow up. And that's important because in the future, when you do need penicillin, which is a very common antibiotics used in multiple different types of infections, you'll want to be able to use penicillin. One of the most common alternative medication we use in patients with penicillin allergy are cephalosporins or cephalosporins. It's a huge class used in cellulitis, urinary tract infection, and infections in your tummy. Now, because there are similar chemical structures in the cephalosporins, there is a small chance of cross-reactivity, meaning if you're allergic to penicillin, you can be allergic to cephalosporins as well. So we usually avoid this in patients who have very bad reactions like an anaphylaxis penicillin. Now meet Joe. Joe has been having really bad ear pain for the past couple of days, but he also has a penicillin allergy. It's not a bad allergy though. He gets hives and usually it just goes away on its own. Never had any trouble breathing, never had any low blood pressure. Now meet Donald. Donald also has a really bad ear infection, but he's got a really bad allergy to penicillin. Last time he took it, he almost died. He remembered his face swelled up. Right away after he took the penicillin, he was sent to the hospital and stayed for at least a day. Now here's a question for you. What should Joe or Donald get for their ear infection? So Joe has a penicillin allergy without severe reactions. So he would be appropriate for a cephalosporin, such as ceftonir, cefuroxime, or ceftriaxone for his ear infection. Donald's got a severe allergy to penicillin, what we call anaphylaxis, in which case we'll try to avoid the entire class, including cephalosporins. So we could use a doxycycline or a macrolide for his ear infection. But you might think, hey doc, who cares? Who cares if somebody has a bad or okay allergy, why not just give them all doxycycline or whatever broad antibiotics they can take? Well, here's the thing. Since 1987, we have not made a new antibiotics, but the bugs keep growing. There are now superbugs that are resistant to all antibiotics. Now that is real scary. We just want to make sure we have enough tools in our toolbox when patients are sick. Moreover, if we use too broad of antibiotics, you end up killing a lot of good bacteria inside your gut. So you can get diarrhea, you can get yeast infection, and a whole bunch of stuff you don't want when you treat infections unnecessarily or you use too broad of an antibiotic. So what's the bottom line? Knowing the difference between allergies and intolerances, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Remember, not all reactions are created equal, and sometimes a little knowledge can go a long way in safeguarding your gut health and the good bacteria inside your body.